Hi everyone, Jean Peterson here. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about collage papers and perhaps some ways that you can make your own marks on a variety of uh, collage papers. So what I have here are a few papers that have been already hand painted, stained by, by my, yours truly myself. So this is a bit like a, a rice paper and you can see how everything kind of flows together and is very organic. I've already used this piece in some other masterpieces of mine uh, and that's why you see some holes cut out of it. But that would be a little bit of a heavier rice paper. This is drawing paper. I have quite a few pieces of these done. I find the more layers of paint I put down on these pieces of paper, the more rich and interesting they become. So I've used uh, my squeegee to move the paint around. I've used rubbing alcohol. I've used my um, corrugated cardboard or rollers. And I've also used jelly pads to make prints over and over and over again on, all, uh, on these two pieces. You can see the difference when you use different colors. You get a totally different look from these. I've also used both transparent and opaque paints in, in these pieces, many, many layers. You might only want to do one layer with your paint and do a repeated shape over and over again. These two pieces have stripes done over and over again. Uh, a thick one used with a, a thick brush or a thin brush. Now the only difference really between these is that this was a tinted paper. It's almost a yellowy green color. And so when I put the black on it, the contrast between my light and dark is less on this piece of paper than it is here because I was working on a more stark white background. And so that can affect how my collage is going to go. If I don't want something to be quite so strong in contrast, I could go for something like this. And of course, it's, it's a larger stripe. So these are some, some different types of papers that, that I have used in the past. And what I'm going to show you now are a few I examples of, of what you can do with these things. I'm just going to do a, a few little marks on each of these pieces of paper. This is just a piece of watercolor paper. It's a 140 pound and it certainly can take a lot of scrubbing and so on. This is rice paper and then I've got some Duralex over here that's like a frosted mylar. I really like using this stuff because if I put some paint on top, because it's not opaque, whatever I've painted underneath will show through and it will affect the collage paper. And it's a really nice way to get some unity. So what I'm going to do right now is I'll, I'll just put a couple of these pieces out. Rice paper, by the way, has a tendency when, if it's a very thin rice paper, it has a tendency to want to fall apart when you get it wet. I'll just use one piece for now. These are, there's about three or four or five. Okay, so there's one piece of rice paper. And I'm going to put two pieces of Duralex under it, but you can put a plastic bag, a garbage bag under it. And that just helps it to stay in one piece. I'll start working first on these pieces. So watercolor. Watercolor will absorb the paint. So if I use an ink, I can use my squeegee or a brush to move that ink around in whatever kind of pattern I'd like. But it's going to sink into the paper. Okay, see how I can make multiple kinds of marks with that. Okay, so that was an ink. I'm going to go over here and use a fluid acrylic, which is a little bit more heavy body, just a little bit thicker paint. This is still a fairly transparent pigment though. So you can see how the paint is sitting up off of my paper. And as I go around and move it about, it will sink in, but it won't sink in quite as much as, as the ink did because the ink is so fluid. Okay, and then I'm going to take something that's a little bit more opaque, Compose Blue 2. And it's very opaque. 
sometimes my squeegee gets really messy and so I have to clean it off with my paper towel. Okay, all right, so you can see how opaque that is. See how it just covers up, but you get some really beautiful marks. I'll spend a whole day just making grounds and making collage paper because it is fun and I practice balancing um, my lights, darks, my colors. If I put something in one place, I put it in another place. Just for fun too, I'll get a little bit of shell pink. It's also quite opaque as opposed to the opera. And so when I go over top of other colors, it will start to obscure those colors. Okay, much like what happened with my blue. Okay, so mixing transparents and opaques together in your collage paper, I find very interesting and effective. Okay, let's try doing some of this stuff on Duralex. I'll set this off to the side. So the Duralex is a really fun, fun product, and it's a plastic paper, basically. So I'm going to grab a little bit of yellowish green, and this is a heavy body paint. So when I move it around on the surface, it's going to... Now these lines are happening because I have Duralex underneath, and so I'm getting kind of an imprint from that, which is great. It just gives me more texture. Okay. I find these squeegees a really nice way, a lovely way to move my paint around on my surface. Let's clean that off a bit. I'm going to take, you can take some rubbing alcohol. I have this uh, Winsor Newton Flow Improver. And I'm just going to sprinkle that on a little bit. And you'll see that I'll start to get some texturizing. And I'll roll over top of it. There we go. Okay, so you see how I've been able to lift up some of those dots? So I can keep doing that within my process with my layers, or I can just, you know, keep that in one layer. I'm going to take one of my stencils now. You can make your own stencils. You can put down masking tape, all kinds of little tricks to make your own stencils. You can stamp. Um, I could stamp with with uh, the bottom of one of these. So you have no excuse for not having any kind of mark making tools at home. When my dad was still alive, I used to go and raid his garage for little odds and ends that he had collected over the years. And I think it gave him a certain amount of joy to know that uh, his stuff wasn't just sitting there. Okay, I'll clean that off so that I don't make a bigger mess than I already have. And if you're going to do some stenciling, it's fairly important to do it with a dry brush, a dry brush technique. So I want to get as much water out of that paint as possible. There's some pink. Maybe I can use some of that. All right, so I'm just going to go at it, dry brush. And then I can lift up, and you'll see my numbers coming through. Okay, I can do the same thing with this. I tend to not want to have a whole stencil in there. I mean, it's someone else's design. Usually by the end of the day, I've, I've obscured things so much that you can't really tell what it was. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to use is this roller. And this roller is actually a ceramic tool. And let's use Compose One. I've got a piece of palette paper here. Hardest part of anything is getting the lid back on. Okay. So I'm going to just scooge this all the way over, the same width as my roller. 
That's one of those technical terms, squidge. All right, so I'm just going to roll it on top of what I've done. And I end up with, you can do the same thing with corrugated cardboard. I end up with some striations, which I think are quite interesting. So again, the more layers that I put on top of this, the more interesting I find it's going to get. So that's another way you can um, make some collage paper by hand. Now this is my uh, really fragile rice paper. I'm going to start it with this just because I've got it out. But I'm going to go at this fairly loosely and let it bleed all over. All right, put that into the water. Let's use some inks. There we go. So these are just acrylic inks. Now as I wet my rice paper, it becomes super fragile, but it's the only way that I can allow this uh, paper to blend in an organic way. If you have a spray bottle, that's really helpful. Okay, see how it's all bleeding together? And it will dry like that if I let it on this plastic paper that I have underneath. That'll help to support it. Okay, let's get some other colors in there. How about some magenta? Quinacridone magenta. Now in the wet areas, it will really travel quickly. You can also encourage this to, to move simply by tilting it. Okay. And it will continue to move all over the place. I have some chalk pastel, and really that's just baked watercolor. So it's pure pigment. And if I just scrape some of this chalk pastel onto the wet surface, then it will start to integrate and make little speckles all over and that's another way that I can make my collage paper a little more interesting. One more way of making speckles is to get one of these uh, acrylic markers and I can splatter the ink onto my surface to create some interest. So I hope that you liked some of these tips for making some collage paper and then you can integrate those into your next paintings, your next masterpieces. Talk to you soon. Bye.